go ahead and call the hearing to order. Good afternoon, my name is Stephanie Marchman. I'm the special magistrate. Uh, we'll start uh, with the Pledge of Allegiance. And I see that we have um, some participants here today. If you could just let me know which case you're here to speak to, and I'll uh, take the cases out of order. Okay, well, my name is Shalonda Brunton, and I have Izzy and my husband, Andrew Brunton. And what is the um, property address? 311 Southeast Marsh Terrace. Okay. And sir, are you here to speak to a case? Yes, ma'am. Walter Holmes, Old Business, okay. concerning 681 Dix Avenue. Okay, so uh, we'll go ahead and take uh, Mr. Holmes' your case first, um, as is on the agenda, but I'll, what I'd like to do is have everybody um, raise their right hand and be sworn in. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, you Thank you. All right, we'll start. I think someone else. We'll, we'll just go ahead and take the cases in order and I'll just make a note to swear her in if she speaks. Um, the first case is Old Business C, case number 2019-228, parcel 11282-000681, Northwest Dixie Avenue. The property owner is uh, Bertha Holmes, uh, care of Walter Holmes. Are you Walter Holmes? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and what I'd like to do is first ask the city to um, present their case in terms of notice and um, why this case is before us today. All right, this case um, first um, was inspected back in September 15, 2019 for a shed and inoperable vehicles on the property. Um, the there was no actual home on the property. Therefore, this case um, came before you, the special magistrate um, in last month's hearing. And what was needed to happen is a special exception needed to be applied for. And also um, plans for a home um, was ordered to be submitted. So as of right now, re-inspected the property um, after, let's see, on March 1st, um, I went by and I re-inspected the property. Um, Mr. Holmes actually had come by the office and let me know he actually requested for an extension of time. So I hand delivered um, that actual hearing notice to him um, on February 11th. On March 1st, I went by and inspected the property. The shed still remains on the property. And there's also a silver SUV that remains on the property that is untagged. Um, at this time, there was a red truck on the property. It has since been removed. So um, where there has been some compliance to this case, it's not come to full fruition. That is why this case is being brought before you today. And what is the city's position with respect to Mr. Holmes's request for an extension? Um, Mr. Holmes um, did tell me yesterday that he does have the plans for his house. Um, there hasn't actually been a 90 day lapse in the case from what you ordered. Um, the shed was supposed to have been renewed after the 30th day of the order which it still remains. Um, the city is um, will be willing to work with Mr. Holmes if the mobile home or permanent structure is placed on the home within a, you know a timely manner. Which I guess I need to ask: um, How long do you think at this point is it going to take you to get the home on the property? 
I just received the plans on the fourth. And so special magistrate Marchman, that would be something that I would refer back to you on. And um, we are willing to work with him, but we do need this um, to kind of move forward. Um, I understand with COVID and things like that, some things are delayed. Uh, the, the vehicle itself um, needs to either be tagged or removed. I have the tag for the vehicle. Now, I spoke with uh, well, another a young lady yesterday, and she told me about the silver SUV, which is mine. I drove it up there. That was uh, actually me, just for the record. It, well, okay. okay, okay. Yes, sir. And uh, I have the tag for it. It's insured, but... That neighborhood, you leave your tag on your vehicle, somebody steal it. I went through that with the law enforcement in the last, on another that BMW, I had someone stole the tag, went off, committed a crime. So what I do is take the take the tags off the vehicle and keep it with me or in that vehicle so I can, you know, won't, can't nobody just come by and take it off. You know, you put the little funny screws on there, they still get them off. So I, I don't want to go through that. <laughs> I just skated by this time by not going to jail because I could prove where I was at the time that the crime was committed. So that's one thing. Like I said, uh, I just received the plans on the 4th. Uh, paperwork, my daughter has to come fill out the, finish filling out the paperwork for me. I just got my product list today so that I can submit everything tomorrow. Submit everything tomorrow for the special exception? For the permit, for the building permit. Okay. Do you have the special exception? Have you gone before the board for that? Uh, a special exception is for a mobile home, isn't it? Yes, sir. Uh, no, I'm going to go ahead and build okay. a house. Perfect. Yes. And lead to the special, I just want to say, um, and lead to the vehicle. Unfortunately, I understand your predicament, but per the city, you know, we can't have vehicles with no tags on them on the property. What does the particular code provision say with respect to the vehicles? Um, it's actually in the I, IPMC, it's violation 302.8. Um, it is, do you, do you see it in the code description, in the uni code description? I do, I don't see where it says that it has to be tagged. Well, I'll tell you what I do. We want to go through this. I put the tag on there, but I'm not going to put the up to date sticker on it. I have the sticker insurance for it, but I got to protect myself some type of way. Yes. The one is um, inoperative or unlicensed motor vehicles shall not be parked after stored on the property. Mr. Holmes has indicated to us that the vehicle is licensed. Right. Um, um, I think if, if he keeps the tag, visible from, you know, within the car, would that resolve the situation? So car, my building official, or would not? Okay. I'll put the tag on, I'll put the tag I mean, on if it. it's in the vehicle, you yes. Run it, if the tag will come back good, but I'm not going to put the up-to-date sticker on it. So if someone do happen to bust the one to grab that tag, pull down the road with it, or take it off the vehicle, they'll get stopped for not for the officer will stop it because the tag the tag will not have the other day sticker on it. Okay, so going back though to the home, Mr. Holmes, you said that you plan to submit plans tomorrow. Yes, ma'am. Um, <laughs> And according to the order that I issued January 19th, 2021, you had until 
April 19th to apply for a permit. So you'd be well within that time frame. Yes, well. And then um, following that, you had 30 days. 30 days following April 19th, so May 19th, to remove the shed if you didn't have a uh, primary structure. So do you think that you're going to be able to have the, the structure? To build a house? And well, you just actually, according to the order, you had until, um, right, so you had 90 days, so until April 19th to have a mobile home on the property? Is uh, I'm, I'm a build a house and still a mobile home. Okay. $23,000, $24,000 to build a house versus $20,000 for a new mobile home and then $10,000 to move it. I would just rather build a house. Okay. And how long to build the house? That, now that, <laughs> that's a good, that's a question I cannot answer. I cannot answer it. You know, uh, have you engaged a contractor to build the house? Uh, I am. I'm building my own house. Mm -hmm. uh, for the part that I can't do, for the foundation, I have a foundation going within thirty days. Mm -hmm. uh, but the price of wood right now, I'm looking to have to get a trailer, put it behind my truck, go to North Georgia, or South Carolina to get my wood. So that's up in the air. You know, when you come across a two by 12 by 16 at $73, that's a lot of money. So I just got to find the best, pl best price I can, go up and buy one or two units or what at the time. So that's, you know, that's a question I, I cannot answer. Well, it seems to me, you know, you're, you'll be, well within the time to apply for a permit as required by the order. It's just a matter of how much time um, is reasonable in order for you to put a, a structure on the property, a primary structure. When we met last time, you thought you were going to do a mobile home, which I yes, think would be a, probably a faster process. But it's, a, it's a big price difference. Right. It's, you know, $12,000, $15,000 price difference for, you know, for on a used mobile home. Because I knew what two or three were, but they need more work than you would spend more time repairing that than you would building a house. So, Ms. Krieghauser, what would your expectation be with respect to building a home of this size, knowing the, the permitting times with the city and just generally the availability of contractors and vendors in the area? I would say a minimum of six months, giving the contractors back up from COVID. The permitting would not be an issue through the city, but if it's going to be a you know, site built structure, I would think six months um, would be a minimum. Mr. Holmes, is that viable for you? Yes, ma'am. And if I need more time, I just come up and have to get another permit and try to get it done. Close. I don't, how long do the permits last when, when he applies for the permit um, tomorrow? I'm not the plant permitting tech, so I don't want to say anything that's not factual. But you can call Ms. Ann Jones and find that out. Um, yeah. I'll find out tomorrow. I believe they are like a year. Oh, in that case, if within a year, I have it done. Well, no, um, the permit would be a year. Yes. But I'm not sure as to what the order would be. Yes, but within a year, I would have it done because this is taking all my savings and everything I got in my pocket. How large of a home were you expecting to build square footage? I'm, start, uh, I'm starting off 26 by 26. So that's the main structure. And if I see to where I need to add on to it, uh, in the future, 
I have that option of adding on to it, but to get that main structure there, I pretty much I know I have enough money. I think I got enough money to go ahead and get that done. So, uh, like I said, uh, that which I can do, I will do. I know I'm not touching the roof. I'm not even going to get up on the roof. And that's pretty much it. So, once I go up, get my materials and get started, it's one of those things where I don't stop until I have to get a contract to put my roof on. And that'll be. Well, the site plan built home um, would require a general contractor, to my knowledge. There's only certain things that a uh, handyman. Are you a licensed contractor? No, not not now. Is there not an exception for your personal home? Um, where you can hire subcontractors. Out and which I, I, you know, about me. Mm -hmm. so, under the old guidelines, yes, sir. you were able to build your own house as long as you agree not to sell it within three years. I'm never selling. So that's the reason I came up with the idea of I go ahead and do my own house. And that which I can do, I'll do. And that I can't touch. I don't know anything about it. I would recommend that you call our permitting department again, Ms. Ann Jones, to get the specifications on yes. that. To She's our plumbing technician and she can successfully answer those questions. Um, now that, and that was up on the Florida guidelines now. Whatever Lake City got going on, I don't know because yes, everything has changed. Uh, everything is changing. We're being thrust out of the 20th century into the 25th century. And a lot of people got whiplash. So, uh, but, so, Mr. Holmes, I'm inclined to, to give you additional time, given that you've gone in this direction. Um, I, I'm going to leave the order the way it is with respect to yes, obtaining a permit yes, um, by the 90th day, which would be April 19th, to obtain a permit. Uh, but I will amend the order to provide a, additional time for you to build the structure following yes, the you. permit, and I'll um, give you six months to do that. Um, with respect to the vehicles, um, you need to bring those into compliance. Um, well, like I said, I, I have no problem with taking the tag and putting on the vehicle. Uh, but it's just like you walking off and leaving your door open. It invites, and it's not people out of the neighborhood, it's people that, and I've been to city council about this, as people that come through the neighborhood that don't live here in Lake City, they'll come through and pick up something, go on about their business and do all kind of nonsense. And then it's left up to the person that was stolen from. You have to prove where you were at. So protect you, you got to protect yourself some type of way. So I'll put the tag on the vehicle. And uh, as far as the sticker, so that's how I drove it up here. I didn't put the sticker on the tag. I just put the old tag on the vehicle, drove it up here. I got stopped one time, showed off, so I got the sticker. And that was it. You know, he checked it, everything good, and I came on by my business. And when I got here, the battery blew up in the truck. <laughs> so that's that's what it is. That's why I still sitting there. I had to move it because I just haven't went and got a battery. So uh, this weekend, I said I was going to get a battery, crank it up, and everything in the yard, move it, because I got to come in with dirt and start at ground level building everything. So uh, I will put the tag on the vehicle. It's not a problem. But I would hate to put that sticker on there. So if they pull out going up Long Street, Dixon Street, Officer may jump in behind them and find out that the tag is stolen before a crime can be committed or anything else. I, I mean, I, my view is that in reading the code, the vehicle needs to be licensed. And so long as it's licensed and you can prove that it's licensed, it's not a violation. I don't I'll put it on now. I don't see any requirement that the tag be posted on the outside of the vehicle. All right. I mean, with respect to this city code. 
certainly there may be other requirements by state law, um, but that's not what we're discussing today. We're yes. discussing the city code violation. So uh, I'm inclined, so long as he can prove that the vehicle's licensed and- I'll put it on them. Uh, Gotta take care of that. So uh, with respect to, again, the, the home on the property, um, again, Mr. Holmes, you'll have until uh, April 19th to obtain your permit and you'll have six months thereafter to um, build the structure. Yes, ma'am. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Anything further? No, ma'am. Anything further, Mr. Holmes? All right, thank you. Thank And the next case before us under new business is CE case number 2021-011 involving parcel 13401-000311 Southeast Marsh Terrace with the property owner of Pedro Granado and Aldo Luz Hernandez Flores. And if I could just have the city um, first presents the, um, whether notice was provided uh, to the owners as well as the violations and the relief that the city is seeking. Yes, ma'am, we had a call that came in um, for alleged um, rooster crowing on this address. Um, I went by on January 25th um, and gave a handwritten notice uh, to a gentleman who stated that he stayed at the property, but he was not the property owner. Um, on January 25th, 2021, I did send out a certified mail letter to the property owners. And then on um, the second date of inspection, February 18th, um, I was unable to re-inspect the property, um, the tenants, um, were not in cooperation of burden of proof that there were no chickens or roosters in the backyard. Um, on February 24th, a uh, second notice of violation was sent out to the homeowner. Um, on March 1st, uh, the property was placed, on, um, public notice was placed on the property. Um, the special notice of magistrate hearing was also sent out on 20, February 24, 2021. Um, there was a public notice in the Sick Link City Reporter, February 26, 2021, and also posted in City Hall on March 1st, 2021. Um, and as of today's date, um, there is no known um, whether the chickens still reside there or not. I went by yesterday. Um, they were the Esplund uh, tree service was um, on that entire city block. Um, however, even from the front yard, I'm unable to see into the backyard to confirm or deny if there are, are chickens allegedly on the property. All right, would you please provide your name for the record again uh, and maybe just say it and spell it? Shalonda, S-H-A-L-O-N-D-A, Brooklyn, B-R-U-T-L-E. If you guys could, could you raise the microphone up just a little bit? Yeah. And what is your name, sir? Uh, Andrew Brooklyn. Could you spell it for me? And your last name? And what is your relationship to the property owner? Okay. 
And what do you have to say with respect to the, the violations that were alleged by the city? I just got to say that um, we don't have no chickens, ma'am. Um, we are not even interested in chickens. I mean, dogs, yes, we have three dogs. But when it comes down to chickens, we don't have no chickens. Never had chickens. Now, it's, a, it's like the maybe three houses down from us, they have chickens. And they have ducks and all beyond they are. Because when we stay there, it's not far from the lake. So ducks be over there, ducks and the chickens be together. And they be in my yard, the next door neighbor yard, over there on the other side in their yard. They just be all over. And it, it's been plenty of times where I went outside and called them. You know, I run them off and run behind them or whatever. But a lot of times I just don't because I get tired of doing it. But they have been in our yard plenty of times. Um, would there be any issue with respect to allowing a code enforcement officer to inspect the backyard? No, more. it wasn't the, the time that I, I think the time that um, the inspector came there, I think that was like the second time I believe I was just getting off of work. And I didn't mind being by her um, coming to see that. You know, she's coming to the backyard. It was saying that we had a complaint that somebody called or whatever. But I mean, I, I honestly don't mind because I don't have chicken. I don't even care about chicken. Okay. What does the city say with respect to that? We would be happy to come out and inspect. Um, for the record, I was not allowed to inspect the property. I was told to leave the property, which right. I was on the city street. So Are these individuals here? Too? Yes, ma'am. And um, it was not a good situation. <laughs> But in, in retrospect, the city would be happy to go and inspect. Um, and there was two separate call-ins um, for the record by two separate people that allegedly stated that there were there were chickens. And per code enforcement, we have to follow up. Well, I, I can't doubt that it wasn't in my yard. It probably was, but they're not. We're not the only chicken. We're, we're, we're not. We're not supposed to have chickens. Yeah. No, no, sir. Well, everybody else wrong with it. Well, I understand it is problematic. Well, I, I would like some clarification from the city with respect to that because I what? pulled um, the code of ordinances with respect to um, it, it's chapter 14 animals, and I see that the um, the, the alleged violation cited is 1432. And I don't see in that section that chickens are prohibited completely within the city. Um, what I do see in looking further through the code is that under For the record, it was um, the roosters that were crowing um, that was disturbing one resident allegedly, and the other person who called in stated that the their dogs, the not not your dogs, another neighbor's dogs, were trying to enter your backyard to get to the chickens. They, they um, were trying to enter our backyard to get to our dogs. Right. They always barking, but we never we never complain about that. They got the dogs inside the house, mm -hmm. and and and, I, and the, the house is joined together. It's, that was a whole house at once upon a time. They just put a little thin wall up against it to block to block. Mm -hmm. And their dogs in the house barking twenty four seven, but we never complain about it. We just sleep around. Right. You know, we just had a newborn baby. So, so I believe Miss Creekhauser is so, perhaps referring to Section 1461 of the code involving public nuisances. And in that section, it prohibits an owner or keeper of any animal from permitting an animal to become a public nuisance. And it says the following can become a public nuisance and the owner or keeper of the animal can be cited for any instance of 
And then number five says an animal which frequently or habitually howls, yips, barks excessively without provocation or by crying loudly or loudly or calling loudly, whereas to create a serious annoyance or disturbance to any person or to the neighborhood. So that's the, the sound provision. Yeah, we didn't have the chicken. We had no chicken on our roof. I mean, at first it was chicken. Now I'm here roosting. And then but could, we didn't have no chicken on our roof. I understand that, but the code enforcement officer is saying she hasn't been able to, to inspect the property. And I would just um, warn you that the code does allow the officer to have access to the property. And that's fine. That, that's yeah. very much fine. So, yeah. so are we allowed to have chickens or not? Um, so the so the code and it, it, um, it, it, on it, section fourteen thirty two where it states animals from creating or causing public nuisances, that's where um, it comes into if um, allegedly the one owner um, homeowner stating or the tenant stating that um, their dogs are trying to get into your backyard. Another um, person had complained of alleged crowing repeatedly. And um, honestly, if there are no chickens and I'm allowed to come back and inspect and there are no chickens, then everything's into compliance. I want to know if we have chickens or not. Yeah, so the, I don't see that the code generally prohibits chickens. What it prohibits is public nuisances. So oh, right. keeping of the animals that create a public nuisance. Well, the city at this time prohibits chickens. That, I don't see that section okay. of the code, though. I mean, that 1432 does not prohibit chickens. It prohibits a public nuisance. Okay. So I would like to see, uh, certainly there are cities that have regulations with respect to how many chickens are allowed to have, or perhaps no chickens in residential areas, um, but I just don't see that in this section of the code that's been cited in the notice violation. But it certainly does prohibit a uh, chicken that, or a rooster that is- Like maybe no longer than just seven feet. But you're saying there, there are no chickens. <laughs> no. Um, so what I would ask is that you allow the code inspector to inspect the property. Um, and uh, you should know that she has a right to inspect the property oh, and the code and that if there is, if she's not permitted to inspect the property, then that in itself is a violation of the code. It, it, it can be fair, but I just want to let her know I have a dog inside my pen. We don't want to be there when she inspects. Right. Right. I guess I'll tell you my dog and put him up. I forgot one, she's very mean. She'll bite you and she grab her. Okay. She wants to walk in the back door. I'm, I'm sure the code inspector would really appreciate you being there yeah. and yeah. keeping her safe right. and, and putting the dogs up. So yeah. She can um, inspect the property with respect to chickens and perhaps inspect the properties further down to see where the, the issue might be. Okay, that's fine. Is there anything else with respect to this matter? I, I think what we'll do is we'll continue this case until the next hearing. Sure. That's okay. That's fine with me. Um, to be sure that they come into compliance or that right. there are no violations. Okay, okay. and um, if you all will just contact um, my my office and we can set up a time okay okay do you you have like a card or what what number will you call um i did not bring a card up with me but um i can give you my number um can you write it down no. yes here you go Yes, ma'am. Okay, anything else? No. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. We will call up our last case uh, under new business, which is C case number 2021-020 involving parcel 05884-000.
with an address of 1175 Ashley Street. The property owner is Jacqueline Espinship. If I could just ask the city to um, review the notice provided, the violation, and the remedy the city seeks. Yes, ma'am. Um, this inspection originally occurred on February 12, 2021. Um, it was called and there was debris beside the road. Upon my initial inspection, um, I saw that there were remnants of what appeared to be a fire. As I walked up to the door, um, I saw soot on the, on the home itself. Um, there was a notice of violation that was sent out to the parcel owner um, after being able to enter the home, the tenant allowed me to go inside. The master bedroom had been engulfed in a fire and there had been windows that had been replaced and um, some other Um, some other issues such as um, sanitary concerns, um, the AC and heat still was not working. Um, and then upon further inspections that did not involve the fire brought about concerns um, for sanitation in the kitchen area, as well as some other electrical areas such as the hot water heater leaking and um, unfortunately um, looked to be hazardous. So on the date of the second inspection, um, there were there still had not been any permits obtained, which is on February 24th. Um, at that time, um, there was certified mail received and sent out by my office on the 12th as well as the 24th. Um, the hearing of notice measures here, this hearing notice was sent out on February 24th, also published in Lake City Reporter on February 26th. The day of the property posting was March 1st. And as of today's date, um, the only permit that has been pulled on this property has been the plumbing permit, which was a hot water heater replacement. Um, to my knowledge, the tenants at this time still do not have um, heat other than space heaters. Um, so I believe they went and bought those themselves. And that's the review of this case. I would like to point out that, you know, as far as the doors and things like that, um, that Unfortunately, um, the property is not secured properly. I will say that the, um, the trash and debris was complied on 3-1. Uh, Whenever I went back out, all of the debris had been cleaned up, as well as the house had been pressure washed. What are the remaining issues as far as the city is concerned? And I see a listing in the packet with numerous. At this time, we have not gone out to reinspect because we have not heard from the property owner. How are you? Good, how are you? What is your name? Stephanie Smith. And Ms. Smith, what is your relation to the property owner, Jacqueline Espenship? We are the business partners. I'm her manager. I have a letter if you need to see it. Has 
she asked you to come speak on her behalf today? Yes. And Ms. Smith, what do you have to say to the city's alleged violations? Um, we have hired Harold Sapp as a licensed electrician to take care of our electrical issues. He has spent several days trying to get permits pulled from him being busy prior to or prior obligations to us contacting him. Um, and as far as the doors go, we have hired Howie Green, which is a contractor, a building contractor. Um, he hasn't gotten to the permits yet because we're being told that we didn't need one, but the city says we do need one. So it's been kind of, he's trying to figure out exactly what permit needs to be pulled in the city. Um, the other violations have pretty much been taken care of. Uh, we're, we're not asking for an extension actually, because we're trying. And I think the AC and the heat is under the electrical part of it. It's not actually. Um, I believe that that would be under mechanical permitting, but again, I'm not the permitting technician. Right. Um, I mean, I know they definitely have call our permitting technician, Ann Jones, and she can speak to those facts. Okay, then I'm thinking it's probably an electrical issue. With yes, it's usually a, a HVAC permit that is pulled, um, but usually that person is licensed in HVAC. So it wouldn't just be necessarily an electrician. So even if the electrician, when he fixes whatever he has to fix in there, if the AC and stuff starts working again, we still have to pull a head back permit. If the it worked before the fire. If the electrical <clears throat> is fixed and it ended up being an electrical issue rather than the actual unit itself, then right. that would obviously comply the situation. Okay, because I'm thinking that it's got something to do with the electrical issue that's in the house due to the fire. Because it worked prior to, and I mean, the tenant said that that day that they, there was no issue with it beforehand, and then afterwards, there has been. So, not that I've, I mean, if it ends up being a handback thing, we don't have a problem pulling that permit. I just want to see if we had to pull it regardless. And Ms. Smith, I'm sorry, um, you came in late and I didn't swear you in to tell the truth. So can I just take a minute to go ahead and do that? I swore in everybody else that was here. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Would you please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, Ms. Krikhauser, do you know if the owner is required to pull permits for the doors and windows? Yes, ma'am, they are, as well as providing the Florida Product Building Code of Approval for the replacement of the windows and doors. What about the, um, Ms. Smith, the issue with the refrigerator? The refrigerator? Is so we're, um, we have painted, we've sanded down and painted the appliances, but the refrigerator is probably going to have to be replaced. So we're in the process of getting one in our home now. Will the electrician be dealing with the smoke detectors? I've got pictures of smoke detectors that are now up. And the CO2. Their combo. Just for the record, um, the smoke detectors have to meet code um, because it's a it's a new install. So that will be something that your electrical person would have to sign off on whenever he calls it. So okay, just for the record, for your information. Okay. Is the um, property currently occupied? Yes, ma'am. And who occupies that property? Marquita, Howman, Nutt. Is it a tenant? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And I understand.
understand there was some problem with the um, the shower bathtub and the water supply has that been resolved that's been handled it was the farmer came in and told us that there's actually just the shower head that was wrong with the showers so all we had to do was just change out the shower head and she's the one that had originally changed it to that shower head How much time do you need to bring the uh, the property into compliance with respect to the outstanding issues, which I understand to be the, the doors and windows and electrical, and perhaps that affects the, the AC and the HVAC um, and the refrigerator? I'm hoping we can get it done as soon as possible. I mean, I've, we've got the contractors hired. It's just a matter of them having the time to get to it and pulling the permits. Another 30 days. I do know that Mr. Harold, um, I think it's Harold Sapp, though. Yes, yes, yes ma'am. He has actually called in to our building official, um, so I can attest to that that is the person that had called in, and they are asking questions of our building official. So I, I do know that that is at least in progress. Thank you. Does the city object to 30 more days to bring these issues into compliance? No, ma'am, we do not. Would the city request uh, a fine should the property not come into compliance after 30 days? Yes, ma'am. I would like to suggest um, $75 a day in respect that there is also a child in the home. Anything further, Ms. Smith? I have one question about the stove. Um, did the handle situation get taken care of on the oven where you pull it down? Perfect. Yes, ma'am. And we're actually changing out the hood vent when the electrician gets. Sounds great. So I will enter an order giving you 30 days to come into compliance, um, after which, um, if, if the property is not in compliance, there would be a fine lodge of $75 a day. Yes, but should you come into compliance, there's no fine and um, proceed as, as usual. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anything further? No. Well, that would conclude our agenda for the day and our hearing for the day, unless there's anything further from the city. Um, just be sure to stay in touch with us so we kind of know what's going on. You're welcome to call my office. Um, just stay in touch with us. We will. So um, you can definitely call us in, Jones, for permitting questions. All right. We were going to call for another inspection, but I figured it would be better off to wait for the electrical in. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All done.